Hello. Welcome to the Connect Ship by Ship Reach webinar. My name is Julie James. I'll be moderating the webinar and introducing you to our special guest speaker. The topic of today's webinar is reducing parcel shipment costs and enhancing service through alternative carrier solutions. This webinar series is a way for us here at ConnectShip to bring you industry experts to share their thoughts on the logistics trends and solutions that impact our businesses. Today, we're talking about regional carriers, also referred to as alternative carrier solutions in the presentation. In the e-commerce world of free shipping, same-day delivery, the customer determines where they want to pick up the package, large and small shippers alike are looking for new approaches to fulfillment and providing a delivery experience that will really wow the customer. In an article on parcelindustry.com, the author indicated that approximately 24% of all shipments are delivered within 500 miles of origin. So having an alternative shipping solution with closer proximity to the delivery point gives the retailer an option to get their orders to the consumer sooner. In fact, 61% of all regional carrier deliveries are next day shipments. They are really mastering this service option. Connect Ship I Ship continues to add regional carriers to our list of supported carriers because we know that our customers want every advantage to stay competitive and provide amazing service. It is now my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Mark McGill. Mark is the Vice President of Business Development at OnTrack, an innovative parcel delivery company serving 65 million customers in the Western U.S. Mark began his career in the logistics and transportation industry over 25 years ago, starting out with Sonic Air Courier, now a division of UPS. He has been a regular contributor to Parcel Magazine and is a popular speaker at transportation conferences focusing on the regional small parcel industry. He was awarded the 2016 TMSA, Sales Executive of the Year, by the Transportation Marketing and Sales Association. Now. Mark McGill. Greetings. My name is Mark McGill. I'm Vice President of Business Development for OnTrack. And I would like to thank ConnectShip for hosting this webinar today. I will be speaking on reducing parcel shipment costs and enhancing service through alternative carrier solutions. And when speaking on this topic, I like to quote Mark Laurie. Mark is president of Walmart.com. This quote is In today's world of e commerce, today free shipping is table stakes. Mark is actually my favorite example that the American dream is still alive and well. Mark and a high school friend started a company called diapers.com 10 years ago or so. And the way they came up with it was they did a Google search on what commodity had the most amount of searches, but had the least amount of companies fulfilling that need. The number one hit on Google was diapers and they had zero companies fulfilling that need. So that was pretty easy choice for them. They started a company called diapers.com. It worked wonderfully. They realized that they had to get shipments there quickly and easily. So they set up on the East Coast and the West Coast and began shipping that way. They were so successful that they caught the attention of Amazon and Amazon ended up buying them for $550 million. So for a startup company to sell like that was, it was a pretty amazing feat. Well, after Mark's tenure at Amazon, he went on to found another company called Jet.com. You may have noticed this in the news about a year and a half ago when it was announced that Walmart bought Jet.com for $3.3 billion. And I believe the primary reason for that was they were buying Mark's brain power. Walmart wanted to be able to compete with Amazon, and here was someone who was doing that and who had actually worked at Amazon and they wanted to tap into his talents. And as you notice here, it's two day free shipping. As any shipper knows, there's nothing free about that. It may be free to the consumer, but there are definite costs involved for the shipper. And it's one of the things I like to talk about today is reducing those costs and also speeding up that time in transit. Because the other operative part of his quote is two day. And two day is a max. The reason for that is Amazon started their prime service. Once someone signs up for that, they get two day shipping. Or depending on the product, if there's an Amazon facility near you, you can even get free same-day shipping, which is really a game-changer in the industry. 
As we look at the next slide, there's something, a concept called mega regions that I came across while doing some research a while back. And what mega regions are, over the US population is concentrated across the US. Obviously, the US population is not evenly distributed. There are a lot more people in Southern California where I live than you would get in Western Nebraska, as an example. So as you can see the screen here, you have Southern California, the obvious ones like that, the Northeast, that Boston to Washington DC corridor, Chicago land and the surrounding states there. There's also some other areas you might not think about, like the Piedmont Atlantic, which stretches from Birmingham, Alabama to Raleigh, North Carolina. It's basically at the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, and that's where the industry and the population is concentrated in the southeast there. There's other ones like the Arizona Sun Corridor between Phoenix and Tucson and Cascadia between Portland and Seattle. The reason this is important is since that's where the U.S. population is concentrated, that's also where your packages will be shipped to. And as we go on to the next screen, we'll see that in all those mega regions where the U.S. population is concentrated, there is one of these alternative delivery solutions. As an example, in the West, there's OnTrack. Down in Texas, Oklahoma, and the Southeast, there's LSO, or formerly Lone Star overnight, but as they expanded into the Southwest, like OnTrack, they needed a geographically neutral name. In the Midwest, there's Speedy Delivery. In the Chicagoland area, United Delivery Service. In the Northwest, DICOM and spreading down the eastern seaboard is laser ship. They actually, you can tell from that map with their stripes, laser ship extends from Maine down to Florida, and recently they've expanded into the Ohio Valley. There's lots of e-commerce distribution centers set up. And for Alaska and Hawaii, there's International Bridge. As you'll see by the next slide, that, uh, by the way, put together by the Calligraphy Group, a research company based in Atlanta. Because many companies are locating their distribution centers regionally, have a distribution center in the Northeast, maybe in Texas, and then one on the West Coast, the average parcel will be delivered between zones two, three, and four. And that is the sweet spot for these alternate solutions that I'm talking about today. You can see that up to zone four, it's almost 70% of shipments. And some of the larger solutions, they even deliver to zone five areas, that's another 11%. So it'd be potentially 80% of your shipments can be serviced by these alternate solutions. On the next slide, there's a list of some of the large companies that are using these solutions. In the past, I've been with my company on track for almost 25 years. When people would ask who used us, they'd be mostly B2B type customers who might even be regionally based, who people would have never heard of. But if you look at this list, the reason that those big companies are starting to use these solutions are based on changes in the marketplace. That's really what drives any business endeavor. What is the marketplace doing? What are the needs of our customers? How can we satisfy them so that they order from us, not from someone else? Well, those changes in marketplace demands are one of the biggest reasons is the millennials. Millennials want their shipments yesterday. They don't want to pay for that shipping and they want it at a very competitive price point. So they have those types of expectations. Now, boomers like me, it might not be as important to them, but with millennials having a greater and greater buying power, it's important to satisfy their needs. And in addition to those customer expectations, there's really a required solution of greater flexibility than what the national carriers might provide. The benefits of these alternate solutions are cost reduction. That is the foremost reason that those big customers decided to use these alternate solutions. Again, free shipping is not free to the company shipping those packages out. So by using these alternatives, you can get fewer surcharges, which make up to 30% of the cost of a shipment these days with line item data that would show weights, dates, and zip codes. You know, nothing onerous, but if you provide that, they can provide you with a rate that you will be happy with. I suggest that you take advantage of that. In addition to cost reduction, there's faster time in transit. And that's one of the major factors in enhancing customer experience, which is what those big online retailers are all about. They want companies to buy from them, not other customers. And being able to get a package in a timely manner is a very important part of that. I'll talk about both cost reduction and faster time in transit in the coming slides. Then there's increased productivity. Since these solutions are regionally based, we'll say, you know, DICOM up in the Northeast, they're not having to meet uh, international flights. 
not having to meet intracontinental line hauls that are going from the Northeast all the way to California or vice versa. So typically there's a later pickup time and more shipments can be processed each day, which means more customers will receive them the next day or the day after. So that dovetails into the faster time in transit. And also flexibility. Since carriers are regionally based, it's another thing they can do where for high volume shippers, I would say, they can offer Sunday pickups with a Monday delivery. In e-commerce, so many orders come in over the weekend and they can be fulfilled on Sunday and delivered on Monday. Let's take a look at some of the details on the price increases that are having companies look to reduce their costs as they're offering free shipping. You'll see here that the ground commercial minimum charge, that absolute minimum charge is the zone two one pound ground rate. That's basically the cheapest price a company will pay. And back in 2008, the tariff charge for this was $4.20. Now in 2018, that's climbed to $7.59 for UPS and 758 for FedEx. One of the major watershed events in this was at the end of 2008, DHL exited the marketplace. Back in the early 2000s, DHL had purchased Airborne Express, which was the low price leader for US domestic delivery. And many big companies used Airborne. DHL bought them. They basically got into a head-to-head -head, uh, combat with, the, with UPS and FedEx and lost. So they after bleeding billions for a couple of years, they decided to exit the marketplace at the end of 2008. When there's no low price leader out there, when there's only two companies providing a private delivery service, it's called a duopoly. And you can see the march northward of the pricing since that event. On the next slide, you can see in tandem with that is the ground residential fee. It's going to be one of the biggest factors for e-commerce, obviously, because most people are having it delivered to their home at this point in time. That started out at $1.95 back in 2008, and it's climbed to $3.60, an 85% increase. When you put those two charges together, because everyone's going to be paying a base package rate, and then that residential minimum charge there, together that's $11.17 just for the base package rate and the residential surcharge. That's an increase of 82%. That's not the only charge. It's well over 80 fees that domestic package carriers charge to other customers. Kind of highlighted in the back there, it's a bit difficult to read, but you can see things like delivery area surcharge, extended delivery area surcharge, a daily pickup charge, address change, you know, rerouting packages, a refusal fee, many different charges that are all added to your bill. If you take a good look at your shipping bill, you'll see some things on there that you might not notice that are there. And in addition to these 80 charges right there, one of the major factors now in e-commerce is the national carrier's dimensional weight. In the old days, they didn't charge for dimensional weight at all. There were some oversized charges where UPS would actually supply a chain where companies would measure the size of their packages, whether it would be just a regular package or an oversized two charge that would have an additional charge. Back in the 2000s, they started to charge dimensional weight. That's the volume cubic inches that a package takes up on the delivery truck. So if you can see back as recently as 2010, a company shipping out a 10 by 15 by 19 inch package would have a dim factor of 194. So they take those three figures, length times width times height, and divide it by a factor of 194. What was significantly different then from now is that they would exempt the first three cubic feet or the first 5,184 cubic inches. So back in 2010, if the actual weight of your package when you put it on the scale was four pounds, it would still be charged four pounds even though dimensional weight was being charged for a package this size. But a couple of years after that, and they reduced that dimensional weight divisor down to 166, which means those dimensions are being divided by a smaller factor, which means a greater poundage you're going to be charged for your package. And then a couple of years ago, what has been referred to as the mother of all rate increases occurred. And that's when they decided to no longer exempt the first three cubic feet. So people were charged 166 dim weight factor from the very first cubic inch of a package size. And then last year, that dimensional weight factor was reduced to 139 with every cubic inch being taken into account. So a package back in 2010 that had an actual weight of four pounds when you put it on the scale, with a dimensional weight factor today 
it's now rated at 21 pounds. That's an increase of over 42%. So of course that significantly adds to your shipping bill. And I see it these days, companies, they'll put in a four pound package in all kinds of bubble wrap, sometimes even one pound package, all kinds of bubble wrap to protect the contents and the price that they are charged for the dimensional weight for that is significantly higher. So add that to the increased package charge and all those accessorial charges that are now added, all the fees and surcharges, you're paying a lot more than you were back in 2008. Again, I would reach out to these alternative carriers and say, this is what I'm paying now. You don't have to share your rates. I'm not saying that, but supply that shipping data and say, what can you do for me? I think you'll be very pleasantly surprised because they know the main reason people are using them is to reduce costs. There are other reasons to use them as well, as we'll talk about in the next slide. Transit time. I believe it's 120 different distribution centers that Amazon has out in the U.S. landscape now. If you have a million square foot Amazon warehouse located not far from you, that means they're getting an easy next day reach, both with the post office that they use and also some of the other carriers that they use. As I mentioned earlier, even at the same day. If you look on Amazon, you'll see that free same day shipping. That's very tough to compete with. And if what you're selling is the same as what Amazon is selling, you have a tough row to hoe if your delivery time is going to be five to seven business days. And I often see that a company will have one distribution center in Kentucky, as an example, and they use a postal solution. It's a five to seven day business delivery, if not more, to the West Coast. So for companies who have their distribution centers located regionally, use a regional carrier here with Reno as the example. It sits in the middle of this regional carrier's basically geographical delivery area. And this carrier this is on track in this particular case can provide next day delivery from the Canadian border all the way down to the Mexican border. So if a company has a customer placing an order on a Monday, it can be delivered on Tuesday from Ferndale, Washington, all the way down to Yuma, Arizona. And if you look to the right of the screen, you'll see that the next day footprint for UPS and FedEx is only a couple hundred miles versus 750 miles plus with these alternate delivery solutions. I just use the example for the West. It'll be a similar example in the northeastern United States where Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, their surrounding area, since they had a lot of land out there, has become a big distribution center. If you're shipping a package from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and it's going to Boston, as an example, it's going to be a two-day delivery with the national carriers. Boston is one of the major metro areas of the U.S., as you know. So if your competitor has a distribution center located closer to Boston than you do, and they get next-day delivery, you'll be dealing with a competitive pressure there that you might not want to deal with. So using a regional carrier like this, an alternate solution, you can get that next day delivery from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, all the way up to Boston. Who is making the deliveries? That is one point to consider. You know, the uh, UPS and FedEx have outstanding branding. And by the way, if, if I'm talking and comparing these solutions to UPS and FedEx, let me say right here, the UPS and FedEx are world-class companies that provide first-class service. They've set the standard for the industry, and every other solution has to fit into the mold that the national carriers have instituted over the years. So one thing people look at is who's making the deliveries. For these alternate solutions, it's going to be twofold. Some have employee drivers, and other ones use independent contractors, which I'll be talking about here. Typically, the companies that serve online retailers are using independent contractors. But to do that, you know, there's independent contractors. They need to be licensed, bonded, and insured, branded, wearing a uniform of, of a company. That's pretty much industry standard these days. With independent contractors, what they would typically do is drive that behavior to wear a uniform through paying them a marketing fee. So they're paid to wear the company's branding, a hat, shirt, khaki pants, whatever it would be. There's also going to be drug testing, motor vehicle record. And for companies that are still putting packages on planes, there's the TSA involved there. So the TSA is a very stringent organization. So these companies have to cross every T and dot every I to make sure that they uh, find compliance with the TSA. Visibility and connectivity. That's one of the things I've heard described in the past as a hygiene factor. By hygiene factor, I mean that it's just an expectation. If you're going to be in the delivery business these days, you do need to have shipment visibility. I've had many online retailers, giant ones, tell me, that the ability to track a package as it moves through the delivery service to uh, the delivery itself is just as important as the delivery. So going online and seeing that package is as important as the customer receiving the package itself. 
that didn't make sense to me at first until I talked to our vice president of marketing. And she said, oh, yes, when I order shoes or whatever from Nordstrom, I want to be able to watch it as that package moves its way through the delivery system to my front door. So any company operating in the space is going to have to offer that kind of shipment visibility through real-time signature capture scanning through a scanning device like this. As an example for that, you can see on the next slide that it shows the different delivery milestones. When the uh, package information was transmitted to the alternate solution, when it arrived at their local base, when it got to the delivery facility, when it went out for delivery, and then finally upon delivery. And those milestones are time stamped as it moves through the system. Customer service. That's in addition to cost reduction and faster time in transit. Customer service is an important part of any service business these days. The national carriers have taken great care to make their customers feel, you know, like they are special. These alternate solutions are no different when it comes to their large customers. They're going to dedicate a team or a special person to monitor your shipments, to look for wrong addresses or weather delays, things like that, and communicate that to the customer. Again, this is going to be for large shippers, just like it is for FedEx and UPS, not someone who ships one package a day. If you're a large shipper, you will get the same kind of care and attention that you would from the national carriers. In this day and age, especially at peak season when what you have really is an artificial spike where package volume skyrockets to maybe 50% more than they ship the rest of the year, you have to be able to process those packages. So these solutions are having to institute material handling like this to basically get those packages in one door and out the other. Go on to the next slide, you can see in tandem with that uh, package throughput that you need, especially at peak season, these alternate solutions are requiring larger and larger delivery facilities. This one happens to be on track on the West Coast, but if you go to Groveport, Ohio, LaserShip has a similar distribution center out there. And by the way, I, I would say right now that all of these alternatives are not created equally. Do your due diligence, go out and do a facility tour and see what these companies are about. Watch the packages coming in, being processed. So you have the peace of mind to see, okay, that's how my packages are being handled. They do have the capacity to handle volume spikes. And that way you can divert the packages that you decide to with peace of mind. Connect ship, I ship. One thing that I, as a person engaged in business development for an alternate solution, asks on my first appointment with a company is, how do you manifest your packages? And by that, I mean, okay, you're shipping with, UPS, FedEx, and alternative, how do you put a label on the package? It's vitally important because unless there's a, a carrier label on the package, you can't ship with them. Connect Ship iShip is an outstanding example of a company that provides multi-carrier software. And since they are owned by UPS, UPS over the years has distributed Connect Ship software to their customers as a technology credit. So there's many of them out there in the marketplace. So if I come in and I ask a company how you manifest your packages and they tell me ConnectShip, iShip, I say outstanding. ConnectShip has created a fully compliant on-track module and in the online software business, it's the closest thing to plug and play. And I will say this right here, if you do not use a multi-carrier solution, that's an accident waiting to happen. If a company just single sources carriers and you have their shipping system alone, you are shackled to that company. That is not a place you want to be in at this day and age, both from a pricing perspective and from a service perspective. You know, During peak season, delivery companies' volume skyrockets and they're having some kind of delivery issues. You want to be able to divert your packages if necessary. You can't do that last minute with any carrier. You have to let them know ahead of time what they're getting. And also prevention is worth a pound of cure, I'll say. And with that, it allows you the flexibility to add additional carriers. So I would highly recommend that you reach out to ConnectShip and talk to them about their solutions. You know, the solutions that I'm talking about here are regionally based. So you're not going to see their commercials on the Olympics or the Super Bowl, you're not going to see a full page ad in the Wall Street Journal. However, the national business community through the Wall Street Journal and other sources has taken notice of these deliveries. So there was actually an article here a couple of years ago in the Wall Street Journal talking about these solutions. There's been two more articles in recent years mentioning them saying, hey, this is what's happening on the, uh, on the delivery landscape, especially with the giant growth of e-commerce. People are looking for alternate solutions. Thankfully, the national media has taken that and focused on it as well. So again, I would like to mention these uh, alternate solutions as they are in existence throughout the country. 
And one thing I would like to emphasize here, when I mention these alternate solutions, what I'm talking about today are the larger ones that deliver to multiple states and provide service to tens of millions of consumers and businesses. There's maybe hundreds these days of Joe's Courier who would be just delivering to the Los Angeles base in our local metro area. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about companies that are organized on the same lines as FedEx and UPS, process packages the same way, and can reach a significant volume of your customers. If you have a multi-DC approach to uh, delivering your packages, you could use one solution on the West Coast, another in the Northeast, one in the Midwest, one down in Texas, and that way have next day or two-day delivery to the entire United States. But again, here, check these companies out. There's even a solution for Alaska and Hawaii these days. As you can see by the map here, there's only a few states that do not have coverage, Montana, Wyoming, and Kansas. And now a word from our sponsor. As I mentioned in the beginning, I work for OnTrack. We're an alternate carrier solution operating in the Western US. We deliver to 65 million consumers from the Canadian border down to the Mexican border and from the Pacific Ocean out to the eastern side of the Rocky Mountains. So your coverage area map in a moment. But one thing I would like to talk about here, in addition to my company on track, is service levels. Primarily what I'm talking about in this webinar is a ground solution. In this day and age, the overwhelming majority of packages are shipped ground. And the reason for that is it's the most cost-effective solution for that if you need day definite delivery. But if you need an express delivery, there are solutions for that as well. Before I even get into the express solutions, I would say since the coverage area for these alternate delivery solutions, including on track, has a guaranteed next day delivery up to 700 miles from point of origin, you might be able to downgrade your express service to ground because the price for an express service is typically five times the amount of a ground solution. So if you downgrade from express to ground, that's a huge money savings there. What if you do need next day by 1030 delivery? OnTrack and many of these other solutions do provide a next day by 1030 express service. We also offer a hundred weight service where if you're delivering multiple parcels, say store delivery, so there's 20 boxes going to a retail store inside of a mall, the most cost effective way to do that is through hundred weight. And OnTrack and the other companies do provide this solution. One thing that OnTrack provides that the other companies do not up to this point is direct post. And direct post is a postal work share product where OnTrack does the initial pickup from a company and then gives it to the United States Postal Service for last mile delivery. There is no more cost effective way to do that because the post office goes to every address in the U.S. six days a week. And now for some customers, they're even delivering on Sunday. I heard recently that they're even doing that for a priority mail. But in addition to it being a very cost effective method to do it, it delivers to every address. Neither OnTrack nor the other alternate solutions, nor FedEx nor UPS, can use their ground service delivery to a post office box. Only the post office can deliver there. So this is a solution for those deliveries. And also, if you're using a ground service, the minimum weight charge for ground is one pound, no matter what ground service you use. The postal solution, there is ounce-based pricing. So if you're shipping apparel that, you know, a shirt that weighs eight ounces, they can be delivered through parcel select lightweight. And it's a very cost effective solution for doing that. There's also no residential delivery charge and not the same dimensional weight nor the delivery area surcharge for that. So it's a very cost effective method of doing that. Again, you can see our delivery area here. Here's how we've expanded over the years. Started this division of OnTrack in 1991 and gradually expanded to the eight largest Western states. A lot of that through customer demand. We were delivering initially in the Southwest and we had customers come to us and say, Hey, if you'll deliver in the Pacific Northwest and give us next day delivery from Reno, we'll provide you with thousands of additional packages per day. So our growth has really been customer driven. The environment, that's a very significant aspect of the uh, delivery marketplace these days. People want to know how environmentally friendly their delivery company is. On track a few years ago, partnered with the EPA and their SmartWay partnership to reduce emissions. That's also done through optimizing routes and through you know, recycling and going through paperless solutions to provide bills where there wouldn't be any printing involved. The next slide shows a solution that would not only apply to my company OnTrack, but to the other alternate solutions I spoke about earlier. What if you have 
a distribution center only in the Ohio Valley, as is shown by the slide here. What can you do if you have deliveries to the Western United States, but not a distribution center there? Well, more and more companies are looking into injection. If you wanted to inject the most cost-effective way into OnTrack's delivery area, you could ship from, we'll say, Louisville, Kentucky, or Columbus, Ohio, and inject into our Denver facility. From there, it would provide two-day service to California. If you wanted the most bang for your buck as far as time and transit, you could inject into Reno, and as long as you did that in the early afternoon, you'd receive next-day delivery from the Canadian border all the way down to the Mexican border. And again, as I mentioned, this is not just a solution with OnTrack. If you have a distribution center in the Ohio Valley and deliveries in Texas, you could inject into Lone Star Overnight or LSO's delivery center in Dallas or into Laser Ships distribution center in New Jersey and get next day delivery and lower cost as well. There's some things to think about. With that, you would need a multi-carrier software solution like ConnectShip, where you could put a label on the package. And then if you are shipping a sufficient amount of volume to load up a trailer, that would reduce that line haul cost. This might be a very cost-effective solution to get your packages there and speed up the delivery as well. So as a recap here regarding OnTrack, provide faster time in transit, a lower base package rate, fewer surcharges, and delivery to 65 million consumers in the eight largest Western states. That's about 20% of the U.S. economy. And California was just uh, named recently as the fifth largest economy in the entire world. So there is a significant amount of your business being uh, serviced in California and the West Coast in general, and OnTrack can help you with that. We've been a smart way partner for years in helping to provide a more environmentally conscious solution. We're not the new kid on the block. We've been doing this since 1991. And as an aside for those other carriers, one aspect of viability, one demonstration of viability is how long a company has been in business. If you looked at those previous slides that I showed, United Delivery Service has been in business since 1972, LSO since 1991, Laser Ship since 1986, DICOM since 1983, Speedy Delivery since 1978. These companies have been in business for a long time. So if you've been doing business for 25 years, it shows you have something that has a long-term viability here. So again, thank you so much for tuning in today, and I would be happy to take your questions. I had a question based on what you told us. What are the initial steps to take to implement one of these alternative solutions? I think first and foremost is to identify the ones that are in your area. And after you've reached out to them, provide them with good data. That is absolutely vital for you to get the best price that you're looking for. And it's typically going to be the number one reason that people are looking for alternatives. So if you could provide one of these alternative uh, solutions with, I'd say like a, a two-month set of data, if you did by line item data showing weights, dates, and zip codes, if you provide them a data set in detail, then they can provide you with the best price that you're looking for there. So uh, I have another question that just came in. How might diverting volume away from the national carriers affect my discount program? That's always a, a consideration, and it's really going to be a case-by-case -case basis. And by, by that I mean is, um, so your company's really growing and the national carrier said, we'll give you a price based on X amount of volume. If you're growing quickly, you wouldn't have to worry about your contract at all and your discounts would stay intact. However, if you are, your business is shrinking as an example, that might affect your discount. So it's, um, it's really a case by case basis to determine how much volume you can divert away from the national carriers to one of the alternatives. Uh, next question is, uh, of the states where OnTrack supports deliveries, what's the maximum time in transit? Are these deliveries all ground mode or are they air as well? For OnTrack, what we are is we, we offer a menu of services in the West. In addition to a, a normal ground service, we also have a postal work share service. So if you would um, be shipping from Reno, as an example, there's an X-Day ground service that would... Um, you know, provide next day service from the Canadian border all the way down to the Mexican border. However, if you're going to use a, a, the postal work share service that we provide, it could be four days for something like that. Okay, Mark, I have one more question for you. Sure. Do you have web service available uh, for, for proof of delivery? Absolutely. If you go to uh, OnTrack.com, as I mentioned earlier, you could watch a package move through the system until it's finally received by the customer. 
One more question. Does OnTrack do dimensional rating of a package like UPS and FedEx do? I would say in this day and age, every company who's doing this business is going to be doing some form of dimensionalization. In our case, we use a, a dimensional weight factor of 166 rather than the 139 that the national carriers use. Uh, next question, how do I get in contact with the companies mentioned in this webinar? I'd say a good way to start would be to reach out to me because I know all of these companies. I do around 20 conferences a year and I see them all the time. My email address is mmcgill at ontrack.com. That's M-M-A-G-I-L-L at O-N-T-R-A-C dot com. I'd be happy to put you in contact with them. What about hazmat shipments? Can the local carriers handle hazmat? In most cases, no. They, that's that, that's something I would leave to the national carriers. I think that's all the questions that we have right now. I just want to again thank Mark McGill, our speaker, so very much, and thank all of you for attending the webinar. Mm -hmm.